Jake Hatch of Locked On Cougars covering all things BYU. Drake Toll from Locked On Big 12. Who? Who's the guy? When you look at the BYU offense and say, all right, something's got to change based on the last couple of games last season. Is it Gary Bohannon? Jake Retzlaw? Who's who's the guy where you go, all right, on our cover of EA Sports 25, this is the Cougar. Uh, I'm actually going to go running back LJ Martin. That's the guy I would say needs to be the face of BYU this year. Last year, I I thought the quarterback situation for BYU was the least of their worries in many respects. The offensive line was really, really rough for a long stretch of that season. The running back injuries and the kind of the, the rotating cast of characters that were in the backfield really hurt BYU as well. LJ Martin is a guy that's a a thoroughbred running back, a four-star prospect out of El Paso, Texas. A lot of Cougar fans were excited to see what he's capable of last year. And he got pressed into action a lot earlier on uh, in his time at BYU than many expected. I got out to spring ball this year, Drake, and they listed him at 6'1", 225 pounds. He was listed at 6'1", 205 last year as a freshman coming out. I'm like, all right, let's see if that's legitimate. Then he comes uh, walking out out uh, to spring ball and I looked over I'm like okay he's legitimately 225 pounds yeah he is he is packed on the muscle he looks the part and BYU needs a running back of the ilk of Jamal Williams Tyler Algier the, the guys that have been really really good running backs for BYU in the recent past they need a guy like that to take the stress off of whoever the quarterback's going to be so yeah the guy I'm gonna pin my hopes on is LJ Martin really emerging and becoming a star for BYU football the quarterback position, I'm glad you mentioned that, Jake, and there are offensive linemen who are returning four guys with starting experience who are returning this year for BYU. Uh, that, to me, in the same way Oklahoma State has 10 defensive starters returning, you go, yeah, but they were 86th in the country in scoring defense. So it's, sure, they're back, but I don't know if we can automatically say they're going to be good. And I do believe that the same is true for BYU's offensive line, and Martin will have to pick that up. Um, and that line is protecting who at quarterback? I mean, do do we have any clear front runner between Retzloff and Bohannon? Uh, I think right now the the nod still goes to Jake Retzloff. Now that's I think that's like a razor thin margin, quite honestly. And they also added another uh, player in uh, McKay Hillstead that I think is absolutely going to factor in in yeah. training camp. So th- that's the interesting part of how training camp is going to play out over the month. It starts July 30th ahead of their August 31st mm-hmm. opener. That month leading up to that, it's going to be interesting, especially the first two weeks of training camp to see who really emerges. Now, right now, so we're looking at this. We're in uh, mid to late June. I would. Yeah say right now game one it's still gonna be jake retzloff under center to start the season now if you ask me at the end of the season is jake retzloff still the starter i can't guarantee that yes. because i do think that if he falters at all they will turn to bohannon or hillstead and will not give a second thought to it help jake this is every every off season every host i talk to you know there's the host at, at Oklahoma State, locked on Oklahoma State, who's going, oh, you know, I can't believe we have Alan Bowman. We don't have to rotate through three quarterbacks. He's the guy. It's so much better to have the guy. And then you go to the locked on Baylor host, and he goes, well, you got two quarterbacks you're kind of vying for it from Daquan Finn down to Sawyer Robertson. And it's a good thing to have two. You want competition. So you get the best of both worlds. It varies by host and whether or not you want the competition or you want the guy to be in the locker room. Mm-hmm. Jake, by week three, does BYU need to have the guy? Do you do this competition need to be over? When do we have to figure out who the rest of the season is under quarterback? Uh, yeah, week three at the latest. Honestly, yeah. you've, you've, here's the thing. BYU's got 50 years of quarterbacking tradition. This is a program mm-hmm. for many years under Lavelle Edwards is known as QBU. They have guys who have finished in the top three of Heisman Trophy awards. Yep. They've got NFL MVP, Super Bowl champions that were quarterbacks at BYU. Cougar fans know good quarterbacking when they see it, and they've been benefited. The last two quarterbacks that started for them before uh, last season were <laughs> Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall. So. Yeah. They know who have started NFL games somehow. Yeah, exactly. So they know good quarterbacks when they see them. The question is who of this trio uh, is going to emerge and they've got to have that person emerge week three. That's the very latest. I I think in their heart of hearts, BYU staff would like to have a guy come out in the first two weeks of training camp, essentially say he, they point to, he's the guy he's emerged. He has uh, separated himself from the pack and they're able to ride that guy for the entire season, but having a capable backup it's absolutely a necessity, but you you don't want to have the whole thing. Having two quarterbacks means you have none. That's absolutely true in this case. So the Cougars have got to find somebody. And yeah, week three is probably the very latest uh, until they settle on that.
from the standpoint of wide receiver for BYU, I don't know if I've heard enough. Okay. How do you feel about the position? Because I, I, in preparation for our interview today, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go not just to the KSLs of the world, but also to the BYU website and see what, let's see what the media guy looks like. And I thought the one prevalent thing that we're missing almost everywhere, to me at least, is receiver. Where, where are the guys that you think will step up and play a big role in that position? Well, the nice part is they're bringing back their top seven pass catchers. Now, one of them, Keanu Hill, has moved to tight end, and I think he's going to be an absolute weapon at that position. He's bulked up. Then he's why are we talking about the top seven? Yeah, why top- are we all leading our articles with this? Anybody who's listening right now, from the or- just lead with that. They should. They should, absolutely, because I have been talking to some people around the program. The name Darius Lasseter continues to emerge as a guy yeah. that was really, really good during spring ball. Now, he was a guy that was quite good at points last year. He had some very phenomenal moments, but there was kind of a, there'd be a highlight and then he'd kind of disappear for a little bit. They need him to emerge as that quote unquote alpha at wide receiver. But even if it's not him, if it's a chase Roberts or Cody Epps, or if Keanu Hill at tight end becomes the star that something people think he can be in his final season in a Cougar uniform. Yeah. They have a lot of guys that are very good with the ball in their hands. The question I think in most people's minds is who's getting the ball into their hands at quarterback. Yeah. I, I, there are, I love it. I, I had to pull it up here. The BYU uh, release says five experienced receivers. And that's it. That's all they give the nod to the pass catchers. And maybe that goes to show how by committee it was last year that you didn't have one all star stand. And Keanu Hill uh, now being at the tight end spot is going to be an adjustment that it, it hopefully opens up the BYU offense even more. Uh, Jake, before we get you out of here. For the Cougars, for the offense, is that the side of the ball where you're going to to lean on this? Because I know the defense with Ben Bywater back and healthy at linebacker is what I look at. Is the offense just going to need to be a, a decent byproduct of what the defense gives you? Uh, the offense is still going to have to carry the defense in certain circumstances okay. because I just think there's question marks along the defensive front in particular. The defensive line, mm. I, they need to have some guys step up and just establish that they can hold up against uh, power running attacks. You mentioned Oklahoma State, the Ollie Gordons of the world, even mm. uh, some of the lesser running backs if in this game. Are, white, if you're, yeah, yeah, but there's all across the conference, yeah. So they've got to be able to prove they can hold up against rushing attacks of other teams, but BYU's offense outside the quarterback position, I think, is upgraded across the board. So if you get even just steady quarterback play I think that's enough to lift this program to a six win mark now that that's me saying that in June and obviously we'll see how it plays out during the season but there are going to be certain circumstances where the offense is still going to have to carry that defense I think Jay Hill is doing a lot of good work in overhauling this defense and getting it to play at a higher level I still feel like it might be a season away before he really gets things where he wants it to be Yeah. Jake, if folks who listen to Locked On Big 12 want to find more of you, where can they get it? Uh, Search out Locked On Cougars wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, We're also on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter under that handle. Uh, You can see it if you're watching this on YouTube, my personal handle, handle, Jacob C. Hatch. Uh, Reach out anytime. We love uh, talking BYU. We also mix in a lot of Big 12 topics along the way as well. And uh, I am a big fan of your podcast as well. So I'm I'm an everyday of Locked On Big 12. Uh, That's awesome. And my podcast is Locked On Big 12. Thanks for making these two shows your first listen every single day. Uh, Find even more of these wherever you get your podcasts. And on YouTube, as Jake said, this has been, and it always will be locked on. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Cougars and Dose Grande.